everyone, welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It is time for the transfer show. We've finally got some deals to talk about, we think. Um, we'll touch on the David Turnbull saga as well as that rumbles on. But it looks like um, there is going to be some movement in the next few weeks. I'm joined by Declan McConville to talk through everything that has happened in the past few days. Declan, there's only one place to start. Christopher Julien from Toulouse, um, a, a £6.2 million fee has been agreed. Six foot five centre half, um, big, strong, quick. Um, that's the kind of investment that we're looking for for the club, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good statement of intent from uh, from Neil and getting a player like that in. Uh, I think one of the things questioned by a lot of Celtic supporters was what had changed since Neil left the job in 2014. Bringing in a guy like that, these were funds that were never really ever made available to Neil mm. Lennon in his time at Celtic, so. You know, and, and going on from last summer, you know, the £9 million for Odds and Edward and then £6 million, but looks like in a, in a centre half is a real statement of intent and hopefully Celtic start to build on that a wee bit more and kind of dip their, their toe into that, that market a wee bit more because it's not really something that we do a lot, yeah. but um, this is something I think that we really need because the defence just now is very scarce. We've lost Mikhail Lustig, uh, Philip Benkiewicz and Dedek Boyata. We know that Jozo Simonovic can't always play in surfaces. His mm. injury problems have been a bit of an issue the past couple of years, so Julie and Timmy would be a great, great signing for us. Yeah, you touched on it there with Edward, obviously the club's record signing. Um, this sort of fee would make Julian the the second yeah. the second uh, record signing. He does seem to have had a little bit of an off season by some accounts, uh, on the season just finished. Um <laughs> and I've read a, a couple of people saying the only the only negative about him is that he can be clumsy and error prone at times. Um, but for Celtic to go and get a player playing in one of the top five leagues in Europe regularly, approaching his peak at 26, um, and to spend this money on him, as you say, it's a real statement of intent. And it's the ideal sort of player that we're looking for just now, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And... Uh you know, the old typical thing is score from corners and etc. You know, actually at the end of the season last year, there was a lot of good balls getting put into the box. Mm -hmm. I think with a guy like that in there at set pieces would be a real danger to other teams. And again, you know, be a really good uh, player in there beside Chris Iyer, who's still developing, you know, people forget his age, um, who I still think is going to grow as well at the back for Celtic. So, yeah, I think it's just a really good signing if we get him in early. Uh, getting through hopefully Champions League qualification it's a real statement of intent of what might be to come this season from Celtic definitely and I think that's something that could be really promising um, if we do complete this deal to see him alongside Christopher Ayer who as you say looks like he's got bags of potential we've been really impressed with him um, since he's came into the team but still um, 20 21 at that, at that age where He's got to get a lot of first team football and having someone like that playing beside him who is 26 and has played at a high level um, can only help him as well. Of course, yeah. But of course it's only at the fee, at the fee agreed stage. Um, we do expect his medical to be in the next couple of days. That brings us on nicely to David Turnbull who has probably had the longest uh, medical in football history. We thought it was a done deal last week. It seems every time we talk about it, um, it changes direction. Yep. Um, it's either happening or it's not happening. Um, last night, obviously, the news that there has been an issue with the medical. We think it's an E issue um, from what we've heard. Um, where do you see that, that transfer now? I don't really know. Um, you know, we've spoke, I know you spoke before about how good a player he is. Mm. He'd be a good asset to Celtic if he came in. How long he's going to be out for could possibly be an issue. If Neil's wanting to get him in there right away and kind of build him into that squad, you know, if it's the proposed 10 to 12 weeks, which is kind of branded about, you know, uh, if he's to go under the knife, might be an issue. But I'm sure if Neil Lennon wants him, Celtic should still go out and get him. And I think they're just maybe taking their time, being cautious, assessing the injury, making sure that they've got in place right away. What's going to happen to David Turnbull? Because at the end of the day, for Celtic again, three three million is a big price tag, especially for a, a player from the SPFL. So I think they're just maybe being a bit cautious, um, but I still see him being part of our squad and being a player in the White Hoops very very shortly. 
and rightly so, I think, for, for Celtic's point of view as well, if they've uncovered this this problem, um, they don't want to be paying that fee for mm. a player who might have what could be a long-term injury. Um, and I think that's the stage it's at now. We're quite in the dark about it, as everybody is. Um, I think the two clubs are trying to negotiate some sort of compromise because for Mullerwell that money was huge as well. Of course, yeah. um, but I think we're all just dying to see a conclusion, <laughs> a, a conclusion to this this transfer story, this this deal. Um, I think we just want to come to that. We just want to sign an over the line, aye. Um, but you touched on it there. How do you see it going? Do you think he will eventually become a Celtic player? Yeah, I think he will. Um, he was obviously voted Young Player of the Year last year. His, his goal scoring record last year was excellent and he's a good midfielder where he's going to fit in I don't know um, you know if that means that somebody else is going to be out the door that'll be the decision of the manager but he can bring something he's a good young Scottish player we've got a good record of developing them mm. and I think it would give us something different to our squad but, but what happens with that we'll just need to wait and see in the coming days or weeks Absolutely, goals to midfield I think is something that would be massive for us as well. But as you say, we'll wait and see because that's all we can do with this deal. Um, I think a few people have been bitten a few times already on Twitter. There's been people tweeting, oh he's not coming and then people digging them up a few days later and then it's back to him not coming and it's just been a farce really. Um, we'll move on. There's been a few names linked now. Um, as I said, back at the top of the show, it feels like there's real momentum now. We are getting linked to a lot of names. Um, and you know that with Celtic and transfer windows, there, there's a lot of spells where we don't hear a lot, of, a lot of names getting leaked. So I think the fact that there is names out there and we're being linked with players means that there is going to be movement in the next few weeks, as you would expect. Um, so we'll just run through a few of them. Uh, Roman Perrod from Nice, that was the guy who was on loan at Paris FC. Mm. I think Neil Lennon went to watch him uh -huh. uh, back in April yep. against Valenciennes. Tommy Smith from Huddersfield from and is it Zanka from Huddersfield yep. as well. So I think Smith and Zanka are both, um, Smith certainly right back. Perrod is left back. Mm. Um, this will tie in nicely. We do need to come on to talk about the, the links of Celtic players leaving um, as much as it might pain us. But um, of any of the names, um, does anyone think, do, do you think that any of them are possible? Do, do any of them excite you? Uh, maybe the centre half, you know, he's a proven Danish international. Uh, played at a good level with Copenhagen. And Huddersfield must have saw something in him mm. uh, to take him there. So. He could possibly be a good addition to the squad, but I think if Julian's coming in, Neil might look at Jozo and Ayer, and he still get, you know, Beaton's still in that squad. A lot of people forget him. We can still bring mm. him back to that position. What happens with Jack Henry and Marvin Comp is another question. Mm. I don't really know where their place is just now. Um, but he looks a decent player, and I don't know what the situation will be with Goodman if he's going to go back out and loan, because I thought tonight we looked decent, but. Uh, we do need cover in those positions at right back and left back. So if we're well, actually right back, we need a, a, a first starter. We need a first choice. Mm. But uh, whether the Smith's going to be the, the answer to that, I don't know. You know, Huddersfield had a poor season last year in the Premier League. Uh, but these are positions that need strengthened, and we need a we need a defence really. Absolutely, I think right back, as you can see with the names we've spoke about, is obviously a priority. Um, Neil Lennon said that. It's not a secret. We've it's been a priority for twelve, eighteen months, yeah. I think. But um, the other name we've been linked to is Peter Ankerson from Copenhagen. Um, again, he's twenty twenty six. Yeah, he's um, yeah. So again, a more experienced player, like we've touched on with, with Julian. So um, I, I, I do expect a right back to to come in yeah. in the next couple yeah. of weeks. Hi. I think we. We'd be hoping though it's before we play this first game against mm. Sarajevo, you know. Tony Dalson's a decent young talent. Whether he's going to make the grade at Celtic, I don't know. Um, he's not really done a lot of first team football to kind of judge that one. But I think we all know as a, as a support that we need a, a, a new first choice right back. We make a loose dig out the door. Gamboa leaving and uh, Jeremy Torian going back to Borussia Dortmund. There's not much there. Absolutely. And left back before we come on to the speculation about Kieran Tierney. Left back, obviously I've touched on Perrault there. 
um, who by all accounts is a good player. It'd be interesting to see what happens with him. Um, and I think the level of investment the club put in a left back might be an indication. I know a lot of people are worried that if we go and spend big money for us on a left back, then it might nod to the fact that that KT might leave. But the other one we've been linked with is Belgian left back Bolly and Bombo from Rapid Vienna. He seems to be a player that's attracting interest for a few clubs. I've I've seen Burnley, Sampdoria, even Napoli mentioned. So there's obviously a lot of competition for him. Rated around three million pound according to the reports. Um, so do you think with the calibre of these players we're talking about, it is just a case of cover for KT? Would would someone like Mbombo, who is at Rapid Vienna being linked with big clubs, is he going to be happy to come and possibly play back up to, to Tierney? Uh, well, you know, as a question whether it's even going to be put to him that I need to fight Kian for the jersey, which could Possibly. only improve Kian's game, you know, if he's got somebody really pushing him, which hasn't been done um, for a while, you know. Emilio leaving and coming back wasn't really pushing Kian for that really. jersey. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, a great servant of the club, but... It was let go for a reason the mm. first time he came back. You know, he filled in at times when needed. Um, but I think that could only improve Kian mm. uh, and it'd be a good addition to the squad. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get one in because regardless of what happens, we do need cover in that position. Mm. As you've said, Kieran Tierney's played far too many games. Um, he's basically come into the team as a 17 year old and he's never been out it. Mm. Um, and obviously, he's had the the big problems with injury in the past year. Um, so if nothing else, it, we definitely need cover there, we know that. But we do need to talk about the links with Arsenal. Um, they've had at least one bid rejected. I think the opening offer was 15 million. Um, I'm sure you've been reading all about the, the speculation on them. Again, we're in the dark with it. Um, how, do you th- how do you see it? Do you think that it's an offer if they do reach the asking price that Tierney would be interested in or do you think it would take maybe a, not a bigger club than Arsenal but do you think it would take something even more attractive to, to pull them away for Celtic at this stage? I don't know what's in Kieran's mind just to um, you know but I think anybody that wants to compare him to their previous manager is a total different mm. story Absolutely um, He's been exceptional since he broke into the team, you know, the trophies he's won in his time, so young. He's been such a central core part of winning that treble treble. Um it will be decisively, I think, up to here. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really think maybe the past ten years that there's ever been a big, big player at the club who's openly came out and said they were forced out, you know, mm-hmm. Virgil, Victor, uh, made McGeady. When the move came in and it was put to them, they were quite happy to move on. Obviously, Kieran is completely different. He's a Celtic supporter. He, he's grew up following the team, supporting the team, been in there from a young age. But I would hope that if there is, if Celtic are happy with the money, it would be ultimately up to Kieran. And whatever Kieran Tierney chooses, people should respect that. And that will be up to him, you know. But he must look at Andrew Robertson. Um, maybe rate himself as a better left back. Mm. Andrew will be in triple the wages at Keynes on mm. and he's got a European Cup a uh, trophy to his uh, his medal collection. But you know, that's that's Andrew Robertson's career. Keen Tierney's different. Keen Tierney's playing for his boyhood club. He's happy. I think he's happy, you know, when he must look at the possibility of ten in a row and possibly being Celtic captain, so time will tell. Yeah, I think that's the the big thing here is it's obviously going to be difficult for for uh, Tierney because he does have that affiliation with the club. He loves the club, the supporters love him. Um, he is just a supporter on the park, really. Um, we see it time and time again, that's why everybody loves him. But if Arsenal reach the asking price, and I think that's the biggest stumbling block in this move because I don't think Arsenal have got a huge budget. No. Um, I think they're clearly hesitant to, to reach 20, 25 million. Um, but if they did, it would be a decision for him. And like you say, um, we'd, ha- we'd ha- respect whatever decision he made because we know that he loves Celtic and, and we're, we're hopefully on, on a journey to nine and ten in a row. And that would be huge for him to be here and we all want him to be here for that. But for him to, 
to have that opportunity to go and, and play at a higher level, um, advance his development and, and really take his career as far as it can go um, is something nobody can deny him because as you say, when, when you look at Andy Robertson who came to he's a, a few years younger than to, to see him at that level, um, you, you, you couldn't deny Kieran Tierney to, to think, I can get there, no. I can get there and I can be playing in Champions League finals, um, testing myself at an elite level week in and week out, um, because that's something that we have to, that reality that we have to face as, mm. as Celtic supporters that we can't offer. You touched on the likes of Van Dijk and Wanyama and the big players that have left in recent years have never been forced out the door, but those guys were always on a journey to, to better their career and get to the highest level. Um, and, and we shouldn't be naive to think that Kieran Tierney doesn't want to do that either. Um, we know that he loves the club, but I think for him to get to the top level, for him to maximise um, his ability and his potential, um, which we can see he's got bags of, um, he probably does need to go and play at an elite level. And it's just Celtic can't offer him that because, because of the level that we play at. And that's it, you know, the only time you can really be tested at that is in Champions League games. And again, you know, the guys that we've already spoke about are good players, but the reason they're coming to Celtic and not going to uh, going to, to a, a Premier League side is because they're not the finished article and the, the Premier League teams maybe aren't looking at them and that's why they're coming to us because they're still developing their sales and maybe looking to us to then step, as you said, to another side. So, again, when he's in Champions League football, he's still not playing with maybe as a good quality that he could be if he maybe moved to mm. the Premier League or a, another one of Europe's top leagues. Absolutely, and I think I think if I if I if it comes down to gut and I don't there's nothing to this, I think he's going to stay. Um, I don't know if it's just because that's what I want to believe, but I'm not having anything else. He's staying. I think, <laughs> I think he will stay. I uh, think he'll definitely. I think if Celtic can can win these two championships, he'll be a real core key part of it. And you know the guy that we spoke about from Rapid Vienna, whether he comes in, who else maybe comes in. Can push Kieran and develop him as well as a left back so he's a boy with his head screwed on mm. and I think ultimately as I said the decision will be up to him whatever decision he makes people should respect but we'll just need to wait and see definitely and the other important thing is it's a short career and he's had these problems with injury this season so um, if he does want to go and play at that elite level as I've just touched on <laughs> you can't tell in football where you'll be in two years time and three years time um, particularly with, with injuries and forum and stuff like that um, but we'll just need to wait and see on it um, the other player who was linked with a move away but I think it's been it's been written off now was Callum McGregor to Leicester he's another massive player for us um, I don't think it's going to materialise into anything, any formal offers um, but I don't expect to lose him anyway I hope not, you know Callum is exceptional last season he's Possibly one of my favourite players in the side, you know, when he's not got the ball, he's constantly moving, constantly creating, you know, he's always good for a goal and an assist in a game, um, he's Mr Reliable with the amount of games that he plays, you know, when he put 69 games or something last mm. year, just incredible, and he's so versatile, you can play him in the middle, the left hand side, left back, so he's a real key, key player, and again, he's been in an incredible journey, but then in a couple of years time, Callum McGregor feels he wants to maybe make the step up will be, be his choice but I hope he doesn't go anywhere and he's um, hopefully part of nine championships in a row yeah I agree I think he's he's massive for us and he's he's probably the best I think I've said this before I think he's the best footballing player that we've got he's the best footballer in terms of his awareness and how he uses his body and the ball and um, the way that he turns I think he's, he's brilliant so massive for us and so important that we keep him for this season that's it for this week. Um, we will be back as and when the deals come in. Um, if there's any more developments, we'll try and bring you some reaction to them as quickly as we can. Um, other than that, we'll see you on Saturday for reaction to the friendly. And if there's any deals that are done, we'll cover them on that day as well. You know what to do, like the video, comment your own thoughts on all the incomings and hopefully no outgoings. Mm -hmm. um, but let us know your thoughts and the speculation. Um, below as well and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already we'll see you next week thank you